um, actually, are you doing some fucking shit with the difference between the movie and the book? Um, actually, I am, yes. Yeah, yeah. fuck you, dude. <laughs> fuck you, dude. <laughs> Joining us today, we have Emily Axford. Hey. We have Allie Beardsley. And of course, Brennan Lee Mulligan. <laughs> I have here a, a stack of statements, false statements about the franchises that you love. It's up to you to find the thing that's wrong with it and correct me. All your corrections must be preceded by the phrase, um, actually. If you don't, I won't give you a point. Let's jump into our first statement. In the Chronicles of Narnia, the human visitors to Narnia are also united by their death. A train wreck kills every human visitor to Narnia simultaneously, including Diggory Kirk and Polly Plummer, Jill Pole, and the four Pevensey siblings, and of course their cousin, Eustace Strout Brennan. Um, actually, Susan does not die on the train accident. Susan really sadly, and for almost no reason, is excluded from the events of the last battle in a weird kind of judgy way. It's kind of implied that she like got married or had a family. I don't be reading into this too much. The important thing is that <laughs> Susan does not end up going to the uh, Narnia upon Narnia's at the end of the last Can night. I give my guess? Uh, that was correct, but you can if you want. <laughs> um, actually, it was a plane crash. Uh, no. And, it, and um, actually, the show is called Lost. <laughs> Oh God, yeah, you really backed me into a corner here. I guess if you change all the nouns, it could be something else entirely. That's Are we number. allowed to change all the nouns? Are we allowed Please to do, do not change all the nouns. Please don't do that. Brendan, that, uh, that's correct. When everyone dies, there's this implication that's like, oh, they're basically going to heaven. Susan doesn't die in the train crash. She doesn't get to go. And it's implied because uh, now she's into lipstick and boys and going to parties. What's wrong with parties? Yeah. I get the other two. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, yeah, lipstick it, for sure, sure keeps you out of there. You painted whore! The yeah. ice ramp, calm down! <laughs> uh, this is about uh, monsters and Dungeons and Dragons. Oh, monsters. you can put us up against the DM? Hey, God. it's going to really hurt not only me, but my brand if I don't get this right. <laughs> <laughs> monsters. They're scary, and often they are just two animals crammed together. And the monster manuals of Dungeons and Dragons feature many such monsters, including owl bears, duck bunnies, skunk cows, and spider horses. Yes, Brennan? Um, actually, owl bears are the, Albert was the only one I recognized, but I also buzzed in early. Uh, <laughs> I've never heard of a duck bunny before in Dungeons and Dragons. Mm. Well, I'm sorry to say that duck bunnies exist in second edition, maybe? Um, actually, there are no, uh... Poking around. Duck bunny. No, I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Uh, the one after duck bunny. Can you tell me what it was? It's literally just repeating what I said. Um, actually, there aren't any skunk Cows. That is correct. There are no skunk cows. Uh, there are, however, stench cows, uh, spelled with a K. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, running circles around the D. &D. Wow! The Allie. person who brought me into D and D <laughs> didn't blindly guess. Looks like Ali knows a lot more about D and D. It's a list of four monsters, and you can by process elimination. Uh, hmm. This is hmm. gonna ruin our friendship. <laughs> <laughs> that is one point for Allie, one point for Brennan. Hi, Emily. Uh, <laughs> Honestly, zero is kind of like a beautiful, voluptuous number. So sure. if I end on zero, like, that's honestly one of the most fuckable numbers. Sure. sure. I mean, not as fuckable as eight. I was going to say. I was just going to say. <laughs> I'll get eight, baby. <laughs> so I'm shooting for eight, but if I settle on zero, okay. at least I'm, you know. This brings us to our game's shiny question. Now, shiny question are just like shiny Pokemon. They're worth the same amount. They're just a little bit different and a little bit rarer. This is a game called, What's Wrong With This Picture? What's wrong? There's an image here. Something is wrong with it. If you can be the first to identify what it is, ring in and tell me, you'll get the point for this round. Yes, Brennan. Um. Actually, the fuck is Hoggle doing <laughs> in the Dark Crystal? This dude should be in the labyrinth where he fucking belongs and not here with Agra or the Skeksis or the Mystics or these Gelflings or the little pod people. That is correct. Hoggle uh, belongs in the labyrinth. Oh. Um, actually, where's David Bowie? But that that also belongs in Labyrinth. This is the Dark Crystal. Ooh. <laughs> Motherfucker. <laughs> hey, man, just keeping that zero nice and <laughs> that, polished. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> 
Charlie and the Chocolate Factory is a beloved story about a group of children who are gradually... Oh, actually, it's not beloved. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't give a shit about Roll Doll when I was a kid. Well, Or I Sesame don't. Street. Don't at me. <laughs> <laughs> No, I won't give you the point. Yeah, no, I don't know. Oh, no. no. uh, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory is a beloved story about a group of children who are gradually maimed and deformed by a loner in a candy factory. Augustus <laughs> Gloop is sucked through a tube in, in a chocolate river. Violet Beauregard turns into a blueberry after eating experimental gum. Veruca Salt is sent down a trash chute after demanding a goose that lays golden eggs. And Mike TV is shrunk by television chocolate technology. All those are events that I know happen in the movie. Mm -hmm. Um, actually, are you doing some fucking shit with the difference between the movie and the book because the movie's called Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory? Um, actually, I am, yes. Yeah! yeah! Fuck you, dude! <laughs> Fuck you, dude! <laughs> These are all events that take place in Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. You know what's devastating is I was in that play when I was in sixth grade. <laughs> and I, could, I if you had asked, if you had said something wrong about one of the kids, I could have gotten well, it. Well, so here's the thing. Also, Veruca Salt in the books uh, does not uh, encounter a goose that lays golden eggs. She, uh, it is squirrels sorting nuts in the nut room. They weirdly changed it to one thing. I have to assume it was easier to get geese to waddle around on camera than it was a bunch of squirrels. I've tried to write a squirrel into something before and production <laughs> came back and was like, no, no. hard no. <laughs> Installments of the Final Fantasy franchise tend to be standalone games, each involving different characters and settings. However, certain specifics recur across the series. Since Final Fantasy II, every game has featured or depicted chocobos, moogles, and a character named Sid. Um, actually, they didn't introduce moogles until Final Fantasy VI. You're right about the moogles. You are wrong about the number. Um, actually. <sighs> Moogles don't appear until a Final Fantasy after two and before six. <laughs> that um, is co wisely. correct, but it's too <laughs> general. Um, actually, Moogles don't appear till I guess I'm just human being. I, I don't play those ones. Uh, are you confusing? Are you using the U.S. one? They don't appear till Final Fantasy three. They don't appear until Final Fantasy three. But are you? Oh. Is, is correct. I only, got played, it. I only played six I, and I seven. It feels only fair to give you this point <laughs> yeah, because no one else knows and you got the closest. So they don't, they appear in Final Fantasy 3 and they don't appear in Final Fantasy 4 and then they are up there in every everything after that. A Moogle was on the cover of Final Fantasy 6. I thought yeah. maybe it was like, hey, let's hey, introduce you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that point, we go to Emily. Oh, sorry about it. Oh, no. You got a nice you slim one. one. <laughs> Wait, you know, okay. yeah, all right, we're all right. All right. we don't need to go into those details. <laughs> this brings us to our last question, which as always concerns real life skills. Ah, oh, damn! Life skills! One of the most dangerous things most of us do on a daily basis is drive. Safety on the road means awareness of yourself and others, so it's important to check your mirrors every five to eight seconds, scanning a half mile to a full mile ahead of you, and mentally recalibrating the image in your side mirrors that are closer than they appear. Um, actually, you shouldn't check your mirrors every five to eight seconds. That is the recommended amount. That is yeah. so scattered. Yeah. Just like, live in the moment. Um, <laughs> actually, <laughs> driving isn't the most dangerous thing I do in a day to day. You don't know that, me. <laughs> that might that might be the true. The things I do, trap. <laughs> uh, um, actually, things in the mirror don't appear closer than they are because you, the brain has the ability to adjust for data, so me knowing that, I already, the center of your brain that <laughs> com controls vision Can is I the same. Off Listen, no, 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 I'm, I'm not losing it, I'm not losing yeah. it. Uh, Brennan, you've already clinched the win. I Trap! <laughs> it doesn't matter. <laughs> Reality is a projection that your mind places onto prior experiences. Um, I'm actually, I'm actually, they Simulation only, theory. I'm actually, they only may appear closer. <laughs> no. You found a clause that is the, is the problem clause, and that, that has to do with the mirrors. But what I was going for here is the fact that in American cars, only the passenger side side view mirror says objects in the mirror are closer than they appear. The driver's side 
is a different shape and doesn't do that. Yeah, that's so fucked years. up because I've been assuming they were closer in the driver's side. They are on the passenger just side. Kidding. I haven't been that. <laughs> I've been listening to podcasts. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm not going to give you the point for that. But uh, <laughs> that is our show. Three points for Brennan, one point for Allie, and one point just me, huh? for Emily. When you Can you make that one look as fuckable as possible? Can you put actual boobs on one? <laughs> like, uh, if like you guys at home want to create a, a <laughs> one. numeral one with boobs on it and tweet it at Emily Axford, go ahead. <laughs> Don't at me, unless it's a one with boobs. Now, of course, we're not perfect either, and we make mistakes too. If you notice something that we got wrong, you can correct us by tweeting at um actually show. If we like it, we might even give you a point. Now, some of you spotted some mistakes we made in our previous episode or episodes. Here are some of our favorites. At Captain Lee writes, I'm actually Representative, not Senator Binks, simply proposed that the Senate grant emergency powers to Chancellor Palpatine in order to deal with the threat of the separatists. Also, Padme Amidala was not Queen of Naboo during this event. Several things wrong there, corrected by at Captain Lee. At HelixD121314 gave us our favorite fuck you with, I'm um, actually the mascot for Honeycomb cereal is named Crazy Craving and not the Honeycomb Monster. At DCH Shadow 4 says, I don't think anyone mentioned it yet, but in episode 3, you said Knuckles is the last surviving Echidna. Um, actually, in Sonic Chronicles Dark Brotherhood, Nocturnus Clan survived in the Twilight Cage. Notable character Shade. They were in number 191 of the comics. Unfortunately, at DCH Shadow 4 spelled Echidna wrong, so I'll award them no points. That's it. Uh, join us next time for uh, the game of Nerdy Corrections, Um, Actually. Bye! <laughs>Hi, it's Mike Trapp from College Humor. Click here to subscribe, click here for more fun things, and send help to keep me from sinking. Please, please help, please help.